Vaccines in your salad, says uh, WFLA.com. I'm guessing a Florida. Uh, scientists growing medicine-filled plants to replace injections. Sounds to me, Eric Butler, right off the top, that that's a thing where we can feed people without them knowing it. And uh, how could that be good for you? Uh, let's read a bit more of it. Vaccinations I think it's from be- L.A. I believe it's from L.A., like F V F. LA, it's a oh okay, not ri- ri- Riverside, which is like the the uh, you know Tampa. suburb of Los it's Angeles. The... Oh, Ta- oh, you're right. Well, take that. You're one hundred. No, you're one hundred percent right. But <laughs> I thought it was LA because the study came out of Riverside, which is a suburb of LA. So that's what I thought. But you are one hundred percent correct. Take that and smoke it. <laughs> Vaccinations can be a controversial subject for many people. <clears throat> especially when it comes to injections. So what if you could replace your next shot with a salad instead? Yeah, I th- that's what people don't want. That's the, to, I hope that's not what they're boiling down the argument to. Researchers at University of California, Riverside, are working on a way to grow edible plants that carry the same medication as an mRNA vaccine. People are just going to be, you know, freaking out. <laughs> Take, imagine taking a vaccine, trying out a piece of lettuce in the grocery store. The COVID... Vax is one of many inoculations w- which use messenger RNA. Uh, no, it's not, by the way. So right away, I have a problem with this article. It's one of many inoculations. This is the first thing to ever be approved with mRNA. I don't know where they're getting this. I'm 100% certain on that. That's why it was so controversial at the beginning. They've never used an mRNA technology uh, massively on the public. It's been studied for a very long time, I think since the late 80s. To early 90s but they've never once approved it for use so i don't know where they're getting that information but fight how, me you can see fight me chris malore they are trying to rewrite history before it's even happened right like <laughs> they work <laughs> from they work by teaching cells from the immune system to recognize and attack a certain infectious disease if we get pulled off of youtube that's because of chris malore from studyfinds.org <laughs> unfortunately they have to stay in cold storage until use or they lose stability the UC Riverside team says if they're successful, the public could go eat plant-based mRNA vaccines, which could also survive at room temperature. So here's a crazy thing, and we'll cut back to us for a moment, Eric. We're now going to start putting controversial, at the very least, possibly unstable, and previously unheard of in terms of use, of use medicines in vegetables for the public to consume how many levels of insanity is that it it's absolutely mind-boggling right (laughs) again i feel like a broken record but we say this every week i mean it started with a simple donut people didn't want it right if you you had the opportunity (laughs) you had the opportunity you could i could go right now to the grocery store across the street from my house and go get it if i well maybe they're closed on sunday but the point is is nice reference (laughs) <laughs> these shots are readily available. If you want it, you can go get it. Now, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, the, the the idea of a needle is is far down on the list of the reasons why I don't want this. Yeah, I'm not, mm-hmm. so you don't have a couple tattoos, but I don't like, you, nobody wants to go get a shot. Actually, maybe some people do, I don't know. But the point is they sold it to us as a life-saving thing. They told us to get in line when they thought everybody wanted it. They offered incentives, lotteries, the list goes on. And now they're just going to sneak it into your food like a dog. And that's the same thing with the post, uh, the Rebel News post of, of Trudeau t- talking talking about you getting a reward for getting it. Like, does this not fall right in line with that? It's like, well, my dog won't eat his, his warm medication, so I sneak it into his, to his kibble. Y- you know, this is insane. If we start allowing pharmaceutical companies to not just to pair with food growers, but to put medicines in our food, I would hope this would be very specifically labeled. And I mean, are the vegans going to get up all in arms or are they going to support this? Um, There is a long historical fight over putting ingredients in big, bold letters on, uh, on, on foods in the grocery store. And I believe that fight was won by whoever it was pushing for that. And now you've got something that non-controversial public knowledge to say messes with your protein spikes. What effects is that going to have if you're just having people mowing down on this? Are they, are you going to give, and it's readily available. 
Is someone only allowed lying. to buy just, one head of lettuce? <laughs> just to your point, I mean, they've already lied in the article. Yes. So they're to, like they they want you to think that this has been happening for decades already. Oh, well, this is one of many. No, it's not. It's actually the first. You were trying to sneak it on into people's food, which is one of the creepiest things I've ever heard of. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the article, um, one, of the, mm -hmm. one of the researchers or one of the scientists, I believe she says that she started working with this technology. Yeah. Um, but for so high- apply it to plants. For high value products, as well, like pharmaceuticals. So it's just another way, like the farm, as I like to call mm. them, the farm mafia <laughs> has, has, they, it's either, okay. It's either For the gene delivery. It's crazy. So it's either the pharmaceutical industry, which is basically in bed with the FDA and the CDC. They are effectively the president now they are effectively the people in control of everything and the pharma everything revolves around what the pharmaceutical industry wants and i think obviously i'm not the first person to say that but it's just getting so obvious and that's why they lashed out at nikki so hard this is really i just want to see even if you're not skeptical about the stuff you think it's just for the greater good of everybody just read this and think about the implications that it could have. Our idea is to repurpose naturally occurring nanoparticles, namely plant viruses, for gene delivery to plants. Some engineering goes into this to make the nanoparticles, all nanoparticles, microscopic particles, go to the chloroplast and also to render them non-infectious towards the plants. So we want to, what that means is we want to make very tiny microscopic particles and put them into the plants so that the plants don't change at all. So they want to put whatever they want into plants without killing the plant, essentially. And then she says, quote, one of the reasons I started working with nanotechnology was so I could apply it to plants and create new technology solutions, not just for food, but for high value products as well, like pharmaceuticals. So they want to be able to put pharmaceuticals into food to the point where you can't even notice. That's literally what that means, whether you think it's for better or for worse. But that's what it means. Put tiny particles of high value products like pharmaceuticals into plants. I'm frothing at the mouth here, Eric. Into <laughs> plants <laughs> so that it doesn't harm the plant or change the plant at all. And if that's how I'm understanding it, which I think I believe I am, that's insane. What else can we what else are we putting in there? Are we putting pharmaceuticals is drugs? I'm gonna say drugs. Are we putting hallucinogens in there? Um, are we gonna start putting like I mean they already put vitamins and they grow plants and they inject animals with things that are beneficial to us. They already do that. But now they want to do it where it's microscopic, where you can't even tell the difference, if I'm reading yeah. this correctly, and I think I am. That's what it sounds like. And it's obviously fairly reminiscent of Alex Jones and the, the fluoride in the water <laughs> and that, that sort of thing. But And I mentioned this on a Instagram Live I was doing with a buddy of mine the other day, but why are they so adamant about putting us into this deal, right? It is obvious that the money has already changed hands, right? These mm -hmm. shots are free to me and you, but do you think that Pfizer and Moderna are just working pro bono for the last two years on this because they just love us so much? No, the money has already changed hands. The government is gonna continue to print out money, trillions here, trillions there, you know, money printer, go brr type of stuff, right? <laughs> So, but why, if, if the deal has already, the transaction has already occurred, why do we even need to be involved, bro? You already printed the money. You already gave it to them. Just go away in your corruption and stop trying to, I was going to say inject us into it, no pun intended, but why are you trying to include us in this deal when clearly the, the exchange has already happened? Like, just, just go on with your corruption without us and leave us alone and let us work regular jobs. I don't get it. Here's what I think. I think like any good salesman, which many politicians have become, you want to show that you were able to move product. Um, yes, you've purchased the product from your supplier, let's say. People can take this however they want, it's through YouTube and Twitter. Twitter is not going to take anything down. It's fine. But YouTube, we have to be careful about. Um, look how many things I've moved. And now this proves I can sell more for you. That's what I think it is. And if we get... 
one, two, three, four now doses is what we're up to in Israel. Two doses is no longer vaccinated. Um, then I'm showing you that we can get you that third and fourth one, maybe in North America, maybe in Israel or some other place, we can get you five and six. So I think some people, some places are showing, look how much of this I can get the people to take. Look how much of it I can uh, sell for you. Whatever the deal is, I can, I can do more for you. Now, best case scenario, it's look how good I am at doing the right thing for the people. So if we're taking the best case scenario, which is a politician who really wants to do well, and they think all of this is a symbol of doing well and taking care of their populace, then that's another thing. That's another way you could explain it is I'm look how well I'm convincing the people to do the right thing. Look how well I've done by getting everybody vaccinated. We're all going to be healthy. I'm doing a great thing. Elect me again. And I, I think it's, those are the only two ways. And even the best case scenario, which I think I just mentioned, it's still a really weird world to live in. It's still a weird, weird world where, and we've seen this coming, a world where um, virtuousness is the highest level of currency um, combined with oppression. So uh, a, yeah. a, a mayor of the city of Calgary in Canada can't really say he's oppressed, even though he does. Uh, mayor Nenshi is his name. He can't, he can't convince a lot of people that he's uh that he's oppressed so what's the next best thing i've kept you all safe i've done such a great job reelect me again i'm such a good person it's different forms of being uh, i'm a victim therefore i'm the best person or i have the most virtue so i'm the best person or and it's you're like, a victim and i'm the only one that can help you basically that's true too even though in all places in the western world uh non-white people besides Asians, so I won't even say that. Black people and Hispanic people in the Western Hemisphere in North America are the least likely to take it. That ever gets brought up in terms of oppression, the government forcing more than half of black people to, to get a, a vaccine that they don't want. Allegedly, apparently, statistically, <laughs> Eric Butler. Well, uh, here's one thing. To, to your point about them proving to the pharmaceutical overlords that they can move the product is what you used to see when Cuomo was still in office and de Blasio still does it. Now I will admit Newsom and London Breed and even Garcetti, I believe in LA, they don't do it to this level, but every day, like clockwork, Cuomo would post the number of cases and the number of shots received. And then de Blasio mm. started doing it every single day, not because he was really talking to the citizens of New York, of New York City, but he, I, in my opinion, to your point, was talking to the pharmaceutical manufacturers saying, look at how many we got to do it today. Look at how many we got to do it today. So he's proving to them that he can sell the product. And to the point about being, uh, you know, the best case scenario, why, and I'm, maybe I mentioned this before, but why mm -hmm. have we never once seen Anybody, left, right, or center, not DeSantis, not Donald Trump, not Christy Noem, not Doug Ducey, not Newsom, not de Blasio, none of these people have ever once said, hey, we think this will work for you. Why don't you look into it? Ask your doctor. It might be able to help you. It went straight from, it's going to, they went straight from pretending that you, that it wasn't going to be enough supply, wasn't going to be enough supply to you have to, or you can't participate in society. Like that. No, but there was never a middle ground. There was never like, hey, that we didn't get an infographic about the benefits of it. We didn't get any, any logical explanation about it. It went straight from this is going to be so scarce that you got to wait in line to, oh, you don't want it. Well, now you have to. What happened to that middle ground? <laughs> Let me know. Did I miss it? No, it does not exist. But look at this article I just found linked in that article. Flu and COVID-19. Can you combine the vaccines this year? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, it's from this service that's providing news called Nexstar. I just noticed. I don't know who this is, but they're selling their articles like hotcakes. It sounds like. Um, where were we here? Flu season's once again approaching, and COVID nineteen season never really ended. <laughs> Doctors are reminding people the best way to protect themselves against both illnesses is getting vaccinated. This year, is it okay to take both at the same time? Plain and simple, the CDC says yes. That goes for your first round of COVID shots. If you haven't been fully vaccinated or had your booster shot, 
<laughs> they're selling this within the article. The CDC, <laughs> isn't the FD, who is it? The FDA or CDC said that they don't approve the booster shots yet? It was the FDA, I believe. There you go. So this this news station goes above and beyond in their effort. Alex Martichu, disappointed with a French sounding name there. Either way, the CDC advises healthcare providers it's safe to administer both vaccines at the same time. <laughs> so, Eric, now <laughs> we've gone from. Get your COVID vaccine it's safe. It's you might as well get the other vaccine at the same time, the one that only twenty percent of people usually get. Now I'm going to look to find this in a moment, Eric. But for those of you who don't know, the flu effectiveness or the flu shot effectiveness ranges wildly. In some places they've studied it, it's gone upwards of like high seventies. In other places they've studied the effectiveness, it's as low as twenty percent. No one knows. It's not a very effective shot. Um, I think I took it once in my life, got the flu anyway, never took it again. That had to be when I was like, I don't know, I want to say like 18 or something. Um, because I, I was like, I don't want the flu. I'm stupid. I'm 18. And then I got the flu anyway. So I was like, "Dur, this doesn't make a difference. <laughs> um, so I never got it again. But to say, Eric, that now we are administered, why not get the other one at the same time? I'll read a bit more of this and get back to you. I think this is just, you know, this sounds like greed to me. 100%. And well, can I just. Moderna really is working to, say... to develop a hybrid vaccine for both. <laughs> for the company hasn't started clinical trials yet. Oh, my God. It's laughable. It's a joke, right? And I will say, I will give a little bit of credit uh, to, I don't know, the powers that be here in South Dakota because the the COVID propaganda has I, it has kind of subsided, and they they went back to flu shots. Like I said, if you go to you go to a number of grocery stores in my neighborhood, and they're promoting the flu shot, so I can kind of give them credit for like sort of trying to pretend to go back to normal and like, all right, well, that pharmaceutical that you guys didn't want, that didn't work. So let's just go back to the flu shot and it'll all be okay. I, I It's it's this astonishing. Is, this is just a vaccine ad, this article. The side effects associated with the flu shot and COVID-19 vaccines are similar. They include fever, headaches, muscle aches, and fatigues. Everyone's a little bit different, but those after effects from any vaccine are possible. The CDC recommends getting the flu vaccine before the end of October. Now, get it now. Do not wait more than two weeks. Start now. Get it before the next uh, end of the next month. If you have it already and getting a booster shot eight months after your second Pfizer Moderna dose or one of your Johnson Johnson doses, once it gets approved by the FDA. 